Hello and welcome back to the Cracking Bang YouTube channel. Today we're solving lead code problem 692, top K frequent words. Given an array of strings words and an integer K, return the K most frequent strings. Return the answer sorted by the frequency from highest to lowest and sort the words with the same frequency by their lexicographical order. Let's look at an example and see what we wanna do here. So we have the words, I love lead code, I love coding, and we want the top K words, which is two in this case. So how often does each word occur? Well, we have I, how many times does that occur? Two. Okay, what about love? Love occurs twice as well. Here and here we have lead code, lead code, and this occurs once and coding, which occurs once as well. Now, we want the two most frequent words, which is I and love. Now, we can't just stop here because we need to sort the words with the same frequency, so these have the same frequency, by their lexicographical order. And that's just a fancy way of saying like which one would come first in a dictionary. So obviously I comes before L, so the return should be I and then love, right? So pretty simple, right? We just get the counts of each variable and then somehow need to just find the top K and then rank any kind of like matches based on their dictionary order. So, you know, whenever you hear top K, the first thing that you should think of is to use a heap. And that's exactly what we're gonna do here, but I bet the solution to this is something that you have never seen before because this isn't your standard heap problem. We actually need to be a little bit tricky here because we're not just dealing with the counts here. We also need to deal with lexicographical order. So our heap actually needs to be a custom heap or at least have a custom method such that it can actually handle um, uh, ordering but taking into account the count which is what we want to order on and the lexicographical order so instead of kind of going over this in just like a drawing we've kind of gotten the general intuition we need to build a map of basically all the counts for each word and then we need to build some sort of heap which will tell us the top elements but like I said it has to be a custom heap because we not only need to keep track of the highest count, we also need to make sure that it's in lexicographical order. So when we compare two words in our heap um, operation to see which one should come first, it also needs to take into account not just the count of that word, but also the lexicographical order. So this is where this problem solution gets very, very cool. Now let's go to the code editor and type this up because the solution is just a pretty typical heap solution. It's actually the extension to the heap um, that makes it interesting and makes it, I guess, even a medium or maybe even a hard question uh, if you've never done this before. So let's go to the code editor and type this up. I guarantee this is probably one of the first times you'll ever have seen this in a lead code problem. So I will see you there. We went over the general intuition for the question uh, in the previous segment. Now let's actually code this up. Now I told you that we need to extend our heap by essentially having some sort of way that when you compare an element inside of the heap, it needs to take into account the count of the word and also its lexicographical ordering. So what we're gonna do is we're going to define a custom class called a heap item, which is what we're going to put in our heap. So we're gonna say class heap item, and this is going to have an init function, um, and it's going to take, whoops, uh, self, and it's going to take a word, which is a string, and it's gonna take the count of that word, which is an integer, and obviously we're not doing anything here. Actually, why am I typing things out? It doesn't really matter. Uh, so we have init, so we wanna just say that self.word equals to word, and self.count equals to count. Okay, that's the init function done, simple. Now what we need to do is actually define how, when you compare two heap items inside of the heap, how is it actually going to determine which one is larger? So we're gonna do def dash uh, double underscore LT, and what this means is less than. So basically we are defining 
for this heap item, how to actually compare two elements um, and then to see which one is less than. And the reason that we're using less than here is because the default heap in Python is actually a min heap. So it looks at the smaller elements. If we were using a max heap, then we would do GT, which is greater than, but because we're doing a min heap and it compares which element is smaller, uh, we need to do less than. So we're going to have self and whatever we want to compare it against, right? Um, and to compare is going to be a heap item, but we don't need to do all the typing. So let's just say, all right, so for LT, what are we going to do? If we're going to say, if our current elements count actually equals to the count of to compare dot uh, the count. So remember to compare is a heap item and uh, we're going to get the count variable, right? We have the count variable on each item. If they're actually equal, then what we want to do is simply return the word, which comes first lexicographically. So we're going to say return uh, self dot word greater than to compare uh, dot word. And when we do less than or equal to remember that it actually returns a Boolean here, and it doesn't actually return the word. Uh, and then it uses the whether or not it's greater than or less than to determine how to actually sort it. So when you do LT, uh, remember that when you do like, you know, minus one less than five, uh, this actually returns a Boolean. So that's why we need to return a Boolean here and not actually the one that's smaller. Um, and okay, so if they're equal, then we want to return whether or not the current word is ac actually comes before um, the other word, right? So that is going to be how we define it if they're equal. Otherwise, um, we want to return self dot count uh, is less than to compare dot count. So basically, if our current count uh, is less than the count of the other one, then our value is actually less than um, the other one. Otherwise, uh, it's it's the other way around, right? The other value is actually smaller. Um, and there we go. So this is our custom heap item that we're going to be using. And you know, this is just going to really test your knowledge of data structures, can you define a custom data structure, can you actually override or actually define the, you know, less than comparison operator. So this is a really good question for actually testing your core data structures knowledge because, you know, have have most of you actually written and overridden the less than comparison on a class. So this will really test you in depth because the heat part isn't that complicated. Anyway, so we've defined our heap item, and now we actually need to use it within the context of the problem. So remember that the first thing we wanted to do is actually define the mapping uh, between word and its count, because we also need to populate these heap items and put them in the heap with that. So we're going to say that uh, word counts is going to be equal to collections.counter um, words. So now we have a map between each word and the uh, count of that word. Then we want to define our heap, which is just going to be an empty list in the beginning. Now we actually need to populate our heap. So we're going to say for word count in word, word counts dot items. What we want to do is we want to create an item for uh, to put in our heap. So we're going to say item is going to be heap item uh, with the word and count. Okay, so we've created our item. Now what we want to do is we want to determine whether or not we want to put this onto the heap or not. So if the heap actually doesn't have count elements into it, uh, or sorry, k elements into it, uh, then we just put it in there because we don't have to worry about potentially popping an element out. So we're going to say if the length of our heap is actually less than k, then we can just push this element onto the heap, we don't have to worry about uh, getting rid of it, because we only want to keep k elements on the heap. And if we don't have k yet, we can just put it in there without any worries. So we're going to say heap Q dot heap push, and we're going to push onto our heap, the current item. Okay. Otherwise, we have to make a decision whether or not we actually want to keep uh, this element. And now remember, in Python, the default heap is a min heap. So what we want to do is we want to say if the current item is actually uh, greater than whatever item is at the top of the heap, then what we want to do is we want to basically get rid of that current item because even though we're using a min heap, we're actually going to only be storing the k elements that have the greatest frequencies. So if our item actually has less 
um, count, or potentially if it's the same count, but it's lexicographically first, then we actually want to get rid of it in favor of this better word, which is our item here. So if this is the case that we want to get rid of whatever's at the top of the heap, we're going to say heap q dot heap pop uh, from the heap. So that will get rid of the top element. Then we want to say heap q dot heap push onto the heap, whatever our current item is. So that will go through our for loop and basically process all of our items and, you know, either put them onto the heap or we did make the decision that we don't want to pop them from the heap. Now what we want to do is actually get our result. So we have our result here and this is just going to be an empty array. Now we need to get those K elements um, from our heap. So how many times we need to pop from the heap K times. So we're just going to say while K and we're going to say the current is whatever is at the top of the heap. So we're going to say heap Q dot heap pop from the heap. So that will give us the top of the heap and we're going to say res dot append uh, the current dot word, right? We don't care about the counts at this point. We've already processed everything, made sure the counts are in the correct order. So we're good to go there. Uh, and then we're going to do K minus one, right? So this will basically run until our K is exhausted, at which point we have all of our elements in result. Now, there's one last thing that we need to do here. And that is remember that in Python, the default heap is a min heap, which means that the top of the heap um, will actually be the smallest count. So we will have all of our elements here, but they'll actually be in the reverse order because we pop the smallest element first and then the next smallest, the next smallest, the next smallest until we get to the largest, uh, which is, you know, the kth element in our heap. So what we need to do here is simply return uh, reversed of our result to actually get the right ordering here. So let's run this, make sure we didn't make any syntax mistakes and we are good to go. Let's submit this and accepted. Perfect. So that is that. What is the time and space complexity here? So like any uh, heat problem, the time complexity here is going, oops, the time complexity is going to be n log k. Uh, K obviously because that's the size of the heap and N because we have N words to process here. So that is going to be the time complexity for the mapping um, that we built here. Um, we are basically storing uh, big O of N. So it's big O of N to store all of those words. And then the heap itself is also big O of N because you could potentially in the worst case have K equal to N, which is the number of words here. Uh, so time, space complexity is 2n, but asymptotically, we know that's, that's just uh, big O of n. So that is how you solve top k frequent words. This is a very strange problem uh, in that you probably have never <laughs> created this custom class and then had to define the less than operator on it such that your heap would work. But this is one of those problems that actually tests your knowledge of data structures uh, and how you use them. So one of my favorite problems for sure. You can also solve this with a try, but I like the heap solution. It's very cool. Uh, but either way, even if you do the try, you're still going to have to define a custom class, the try class and the try node class to actually solve this. I just think the heap solution is a little bit easier to um, think about. It's a lot easier to code. And yeah, it's just really cool that you define this uh, less than operator. So don't just think that um, it's all straightforward. Sometimes you will actually have to know your data structures uh, to solve these questions. Anyway, that's enough rambling. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, why not give it a like and subscribe to the channel? It really helps me grow, trying to get to 10,000 subscribers relatively soon. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching again, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.